John said, one mightier than I is coming. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. After all, the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying. Heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Well, I hope no one got thrown too much by the name Harry Potter. (laughs) Uh, How can Harry Potter be a priest, right? (laughs) Well, you know, a priest is kind of a wizard in a sense, according to the spirits, right? So I guess we can see how that could possibly work. And Well, you know, uh, I just thought I'd let you know if I also write uh, books uh, that take place in sword and sorcery. Uh, So... Uh, I've had the two books I've written so far, and uh, if you like that kind of thing, uh, just come see me after Mass. I'll get you a copy of it in the trunk of my car. Carry around a few copies. Uh, I got a few copies, so a free copy if you want that. Uh, I was going to bring more copies, but I forgot. And I think the reason I forgot is because I've been, my mind has been preoccupied with things. You know, I work in a country parish out there in Decatur. And uh, in Dwaziak. So recently we just had a terrible thing happen. Our uh, sacristan was killed uh, in a traffic accident. You know, her car turned over. Uh, she lost control on that slippery day, just, uh, just on Friday. And a uh, truck slammed into her, killed instantly. She wasn't, I mean, she was young, right? She was only. Uh, she had a teenage or a 20 something year old daughter. It's terrible things. So the whole community is very shocked, right? And uh, wondering, we're all just very distraught. And so uh, we beg the Lord for mercy, and I hope that you'll keep that community in your prayers, the Sacred Heart community, in your prayers uh, this week, uh, knowing that they've lost a very dear one. She had such a wonderful spirit. And I remember uh, just thinking, uh, you know, how much she loved to serve the Lord because she was basically taking care of everything in that parish because no particular priest lived there. And so she took care of everything and made everything uh, ready for the priest when he came. And uh, she did such a good job, and she had such a nice spirit. I mean, she had this great uh, eagerness to serve the Lord, and uh, she was filled with joy. And how wonderful it was to uh, work with her. It's, uh, It's astounding to me that she's gone. It's like, uh, it's hard to explain, you know. Um, One minute you're laughing and having a good time with someone, and the next day they're gone forever. It makes you really wonder, you know. So uh, when it hits that close to home, and then you realize, hey, you know, this can also be me, so I better be ready too. One thing that she did teach us in in her death was that uh, we don't know the day nor the hour, right? None of us know the day nor the hour. And so uh, that's why uh, today's solemnity of the baptism is so important to think about. Uh, because uh, Christ wants us to be baptized. And so if you haven't been baptized, get baptized. And don't delay it anymore. And if you haven't had your children uh, baptized, get them baptized. Because uh, would you uh, let them die without having that great benefit of baptism? It's such an awesome benefit to receive baptism.
because for thousands of years, heaven was not open. It was closed. And Christ came and he opened it up for us. And so we call baptism the most important sacrament. Certainly the mass is the greatest of the sacraments. Uh, and it's the sacrament from which is derived all graces that Christ won for us on the cross. And we, when we're at Mass, we're at the Last Supper, and we're also at Golgotha. And he opened up all those graces for us to be able to get to heaven. But he established baptism as the way. You think about today's account of the baptism. Why would Christ get baptized? I mean, after all, he wasn't a sinner. He was perfect. He never committed any sin at all, ever, in his entire life. So why would he need baptism? Why would he need to be cleansed from sin? After all, John the Baptist was going around saying, Repent, be cleansed of your sins, be washed in the river of your sins. Repent. So... Christ knew what baptism meant. He wasn't ignorant about that. He knew what the followers of John the Baptist were doing. They were repenting of their sins and cleansing themselves. So why would Jesus do this? He didn't need to. He was God himself. Well, remember what Jesus' first words in his ministry were. Repent and believe the gospel. Right When he started to preach, that's what he said to people. Repent and believe the gospel. And so uh, we must repent of our sins and do as Jesus says, believe in the gospel. And, you know, we're kind of in this world right now, we're going through a kind of paradigm shift, it seems like to me, where the rationalism of the, of the Enlightenment period is, is starting to really decay. And we're entering into a new time, a new a new age, as it were. You remember, perhaps you've read some of those fantasy writers like Tolkien. You know, he'd speak about the second age or the third age, right? Maybe now we're entering into a different age because there certainly is a paradigm shift going on. And certainly people are beginning to see that science is not in contradiction to religion, necessarily. But there's still a lot of people that don't want to accept that. They're afraid. And uh, they don't want us to see God as our creator. But he did create us. He created us to be with him forever. But because we lost that relationship through original sin, Adam and Eve, right? Remember the story, don't you? Uh, they were both at fault, not just Eve, but both of them were at fault because they were irresponsible. And they listened to the serpent. And so they fell, and they lost many things. They lost the supernatural powers that they had before, which uh, could have gotten them to heaven, but those were gone. And God looked down upon them, had pity on them. And even at that point, he had prepared for them a salvation. Even at that point. And that's where the Virgin Mary comes in, the Proto-Evangelion. And she would, God said, you know, the serpent shall strike against your heel and you shall step on his head. Right? I'll put enmity between you and the serpent. And that battle is still going on today. Our faith is a battle. It's not just a membership and an ideology in which we say, well, we're going to make the world a better place. No. Certainly, if the world could have been made a better place, they would have done so long ago. But clearly, that's not happening. So what is our faith about? It's about the next life, getting to the next life, getting to eternal life. And if in the process, somehow we do make the world a better world because God commands us to love our neighbor, well, then that's great. But we must not forget the purpose of our baptism to get us into heaven. Because heaven has been opened. It's no longer closed on account of the sin of Adam and Eve. The gates were shut when they sinned. An angel was put there with a fiery sword so that no one could get in. But that's gone now. And the gates are open. 
we can enter in. All we have to do is do what is prescribed by the church and love our neighbor and love God. If we do these things, we'll be able to get in. But we must be very careful because there's someone who doesn't want us to go to heaven, who's envious of us, doesn't want us to take their seats. That's the devil and the fallen angels. And so that's why I say this is a combat. It's a journey, yes. It's also a combat. Is there any soldier in the world that has not, in a war, both had to journey and to combat? Well, that's what you're doing because you're in a spiritual war. And when you think about your baptism, remember that it has made you more than just a member of the church, but God has given you very powerful gifts. He's instilled them into, infused into your soul the gifts of faith and the gift of hope and the gift of charity. These are not natural gifts. These are supernatural. They're above nature. They're fused directly into the soul when the child is baptized. And so baptism is, is more than just a ritual saying you're a member of the church. God is conferring actual power into the souls that are being baptized. These virtues to help us live out our life in Christ because, you know, we, in a sense, not physically, but spiritually, there is death in us before we're baptized. And the scriptures talk about dying in the waters of baptism so that uh, our old life dies and he remakes us anew. We become a new creation in Christ when we are baptized. We are become alive in Christ. And that's why St. Paul can say, it is not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. But yet the old man still remains in each one of us. He still looks back to his sins and wishes he could continue his sins. And so that's also part of the struggle as well. Because... In the spiritual combat, we have more than one enemy. There's more than just the devil and his fallen angels. There's also our own fallen selves that we have to overcome. That old man who wants to go back to his sins, which he enjoyed so much. We have to overcome that as well. Not an easy task. And then we also have other in our lives, the people in our lives, there's some people in our lives that don't want us to be happy. And so we have to pray for those people in order to protect ourselves. Like there's some people in our lives that don't want us to even talk about God. People of the world, even rulers of the world, they want to squelch the word of God not let it be heard anymore. They don't want the light of God in the world. They want to squelch it. These are very powerful world rulers. Sometimes they don't even identify themselves. They work secretly behind the scenes. So these, these people are real. They're, they're real opponents. They want, for example, one of the things they want is population control. Because apparently there's too many beautiful people in the world. We have to pray for the souls that are plotting these things. And remember this combat that we're in. Because we, if we're going to fight for not only ourselves, but for our family, the people that we love, we, and for the world, and we want to make the world a better place, we've got to begin with ourselves. Anyone will tell you that. You can't make the world a better place unless you start with yourself. And so that means looking within and, you know, kind of uh, nourishing that contemplative within you, right? That introspection, nourishing that, that spiritual life that's within you and not letting it go. We do that and uh, continue on to fulfill your baptism, which is going to get you to heaven. And make sure that those children that you know, if they're not baptized, you can make arrangements to get them baptized as soon as possible. 
Because, uh, you know, it's, as I say, it's not just an empty ritual. A lot of people like to accuse us Catholics of being involved in empty rituals. But these are not empty rituals. These are things that were established by Jesus Christ himself. They weren't established by the church. No, no, no. They were established by Jesus. The church has preserved them. And so Jesus himself participates in a ritual in today's solemnity. He consents to doing a religious ritual, baptism. He says, this is the way. And by doing this, he doesn't, as I say, he doesn't need to be baptized. But by doing this, he's saying, I want you to do this as well, to be baptized. Because it's so important. And then at the end, after he's been crucified and risen from the dead, what does he tell the apostles? Go forth unto all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teach them all that I have told you. Baptize them. He commands that they be baptized and become Catholic. He wants them to do this. In so doing, he also reminds us that it's for all people, not just some people, not just people that live in Northern Europe or in you know, the Midwest to be Catholic, but it's actually for everyone. And it's all around the world, as you know. Our faith is everywhere. It's for everyone. The three magi, when he was born, attested to that as well. Think of these kings, these great kings of the earth, humbly kneeling before a little baby. How powerful these great kings, that they kneel. And, you know, in the East, when you kneel, what that means, when you kneel before someone, it means that you're submitting to them. It doesn't mean love. In the West, when you kneel, that's adoration. It means you love Jesus when you kneel to Jesus. You're saying, I love you. When you come in here and genuflect over there at the, at the tabernacle, you're saying to Jesus, I love you. But in the East, to kneel means submission. I submit to you. Those kings, those three magi submitted to Jesus because they were ready. They had opened up their souls to learn about God, even though they weren't even Catholic. To never look upon people who are not of our own faith as lesser because they want God. They're searching for God. So many people are searching for God now. And yet, we're not strong enough as Catholics. We need to get stronger. So let's pray together today in this Mass. Ask the Lord God for that so that we can be strong enough to bring the light of God to many people in these times that we live in. They need it so very badly. They need hope. They need the hope of the resurrection. To know that there is something after death. That there is life after death. And that we will see our loved ones in the land of the living one day again. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.